Hello. Welcome to the evening edition of ENGR 219 Mechanics of Materials. So today in class we talked about bending and we, we ended the lecture talking about the flexure formula, MC over I. Stress equals MC over I. But we didn't get as far as I would have hoped. Part of that is because of the wonderful questions that you asked me during class. So we're going to finish the lecture today on our evening YouTube edition and then we're going to post some practice problems for you to do for our test coming up on Tuesday. So I've got my Starbucks coffee, I've got my slides, I've got my notes, I'm ready to go. So if we pan over to my slides, we'll get started. Basically, when dealing with bendings, we have to make some assumptions. Just like any other time we're dealing with stresses and strains on loads, we have to make some overarching assumptions, and usually our, our assumptions hold pretty true to what we're trying to determine. So the assumptions here, number one, are that the plane section remains plane. So this is, we're talking about the cross section. So the cross section remains plane. The length of the longitudinal axis remains unchanged. The plane section remains perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. And the in-plane distortion of this section is negative. If I could sneak into the picture real quick here, the main point I want to demonstrate is when you're bending something, and this a typical beam that you would talk about in, in, in engineering and mechanics wouldn't flex as much as this, right? You can consider this to be almost like rubber or an analog of rubber. So what we have here is an exaggerated explanation of the concept that we're talking about. So if I produce two couple moments, one couple moment here, one couple moment here, and we bend this section. If we zoom in nice and close, we can see that that top horizontal line stretches, whereas the bottom horizontal line compresses. And one thing that we'll notice is that middle horizontal line doesn't change at all. So that's what we're going to call our neutral axis. So the middle horizontal line experiences no stress. It's our neutral axis. It remains the same length, the same orientation. So what's happening here is this top line is stretching. So if you're talking about fibers in a beam, those fibers would be in tension. And the fibers on the bottom of the beam, if this were a beam being pushed, uh, torqued in a moment like this, those fibers would be in compression. So in the same beam, we have tension, we have compression, and we have a neutral axis that has neither of the two. So that will be important in our concept. And when we draw our QBs, everybody's favorite, the QBs, and then the stress concentrations, not stress concentrations, but stress distributions along a cross section, we'll be able to see some fibers are in tension, some fibers are in compression, and some fibers aren't being stressed at all. This is basically showing you that strain is linearly related to the perpendicular distance from the neutral axis. And because of Hooke's law, if we talk about materials that are linearly elastic, if we say stress is equal to our elastic modulus times strain, well, if we if we plug in stress, if we plug in stress over E equals strain, the E's cancel, and we get a stress. Let me point with my pointer here. We get a stress equals ratio of y over c to sigma max. If we sum our moments around our neutral axis, we get a y delta force. We plug in delta force is is a stress times an area. Plug in our stress here. And we get a y times the ratio of y over c, sigma max dA. Take out sigma max over c because they're constant, you get an interval of y squared. That's a section modulus that is, it's not, a, it's not exactly a section modulus, it's a, it's a moment area or a moment of inertia, a polar moment of inertia or a cross-sectional moment of inertia, if you will. So that is, gets pulled out and called c. So our, our stress max is moment times our radial distance over i. And if we're looking at, for some stress at an intermediate distance, y, we can say stress equals my over i. Important points to note, the cross-section of the beam remains plane. We've talked about that. And one thing that we're going to need to identify is the neutral axis. And for these types of bending problems in Chapter 6, the neutral axis lies at the centroid of the cross-sectional area. In further chapters, and in Machine Design 1, you'll actually see curved beams in bending which the neutral axis and the, the axis of symmetry, if you will, do not coincide. So the procedure for analysis, the first thing to do is find the internal moment. 
And we've got to know the neutral axis first and foremost because moments will be calculated about that axis. The next thing is the section properties. We talked a little bit about y bar in class. Y bar is a geometric or an algebraic distance from the centroid of a compression from a composite part. So you could take the summation of y tildes, that's the independent y bars, times a over the summation of all the a's of composite parts to get your y bar. There are different ways to do it. You can take your y bar from the top, uh, I'm sorry, you can take your y bar from the bottom of a cross section and go up. You can take your y bar from the top of a cross section and go down. And you can take your y bar pretending that there are two rectangles here and taking the y bar of this big block minus those two thinner blocks and get your y bar there. So I won't work any y bars specifically, but I challenge you on your own to work some. Make sure you get the y bars quick and easily. So the procedure for the analysis, section properties, normal stress, to find more, okay, so more section properties. Parallel axis theorem is something you probably learned in either statics or physics. It's basically saying the moment of inertia is equal to the summation of the moment of inertia of that section times the area of that section times the distance squared, where the distance is from the centroid of that part to the neutral axis. That's the distance y that we square in our parallel axis theorem. So you can do this for the same part that we talked about. Uh, the, the moment of inertia of a rectangular part is 1 12 base times height cubed. So you do the moment of inertia of this bottom part plus the area of that bottom part minus the 8.55, which is our y bar, minus 5. It gets us to the center of that part, and you square it. So it doesn't really matter if you take 5 minus 8.55 or 8.55 minus 5. Because it's squared, the negative goes away. And then you do the parallel axis theorem for that top part, and you get your y distance, your dy distance, to be 4.45 minus 1.5. So you get your i to be 646 inches squared. You can also do it based on the big block minus the two small blocks. OK, so we got our second property. So now the normal stress is stress equals mc over i. So here's a quick example of how to find your moment of inertia. Now I won't solve this one for you, but I will explain it in words and give you the answer. I want you to show me on your own that y equals 1.0 times 10 to the third, negative third, m to the fourth. So what we can do here is take the big block here subtract the little block and get our i. That's how we would solve that. So this next problem here is not as simple because we don't have our neutral axis at the geometric center of our part. So the first step to find the, what are we looking for? Determine the location of the centroid and the moment of inertia. So the first step is to find the centroid and the second step will be to find the moment of inertia. So we can take our y bar to equal a summation of our y tildes times a over our summation of a. So the point zero 0.05 is the y bar or the y tilde to the first geometric center and then times our area plus the point 0.25 gets us to the center of that top portion times the area all over a summation of the areas. So this value equals 0 0.17 meters. So that's 0 0.17 meters from the bottom of the part. So we have a neutral axis and this is our y bar. So if we want to find our i, we can say it's the summation of ix plus a dy squared 
So we've got 112 at the base of our bottom. That's our height cube. Plus our area times 0 0.17 minus 0 0.05 squared plus moment of inertia of our top part times 0 0.3 cube plus our area times our 0 0.25 minus 0 0.17. And we get 0 0.722 times 10 to the negative third meters to the fourth. So moment of inertia values are often very small, especially if they're in units of meters squared, or I'm sorry, meters to the fourth. Meters to the fourth is a, is a, if it was in millimeters to the fourth, right, it would, have, it would be much bigger. But in meters to the fourth, we get pretty small numbers. So be aware of that and keep many decimal places. So in each case, we want to show how the bending stress acts on a differential element located at points A and B. So I will do this one, get my pen to work. I will do this one and I'll have you do this one on your own in class assignment. As you know in class, I have to redo my pen every time. So for the first one, we have a shear at B, a moment at B. Our point B is there, and we have a load P there. So our little volumetric element we can draw here. So our stress at B, we're only talking about normal stress here, our bending stress, normal stress due to bending stress, would be this, right? Because this portion is being pulled, this portion is being pushed, so this portion at B is being pushed on. So if we were to look at A, we have a force going down, we have a shear going up, not so concerned about the shear at this point. Our point A here, we can say our point A, our stress is being pulled out. Okay, I hope these cubies are clear to you because you'll probably see them again on Tuesday. So sketch the bending stress distribution over each cross section. So I know we aren't artists, probably most of us, but on the exam if I ask you to sketch something, we're going to go ahead and give it our best bet. And you can probably bet that it will be something 3D. So on a cross section like this, you have bending stress that's being occurred around the neutral axis because remember at the neutral axis we call this our neutral axis let's get our pen neutral axis so we have a bending stress going like this so we're going to have tension here and compression here so let's see how well I can draw this I did it in class and I think I did a pretty good job so let's see if I can recreate it we have some three-dimensional part. So we have a neutral axis. And again, nothing is happening at the neutral axis. No stress is occurring there. So at this part, we have stresses in tension. It goes all the way down, all the way down to our neutral axis. So these are pulling, 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 pulling. And then we have stresses in compression. Compression, compression, compression. And this is all due to our moment that looks something like this. Okay? So I'll challenge you on this one to sketch this one on your own. But that's a little bit more tri tricky because we have a uh, change in geometry here, but I believe you can do it. 
So example problem five. If the beam is subjected to the bending moment of 20 kilonewtons times a meter, determine the maximum bending stress in the beam. So if you look at this very carefully, where is the, where is the neutral axis here? Well, because of symmetry, our neutral axis is going to be right down the middle there. We're going to have tension on this end, and we're going to have compression on this end. Tension and compression. So the neutral axis will be right across there. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. We've got, we want to find the maximum stress. So the maximum stress is equal to our MC over I, where our M was 20. I, I don't know why I put that there. Our M is 20 kilonewtons meters and our C is 0 0.100 meters. So if we solve for our I, we can say 112. Our base, if we look at our geometry, is 0 .0, 0 0.3 minus 0 0.02 times 2. Zero 02 there. I'm 0 0.02 cubed plus 2 because we have two of those sections on the left and right side 0 0.02 times 0 0.2 cubed. So we get 26.84 times 10 to the negative 6. So a very small number. So our sigma max equals mc over i. Plug it in, you get 74.5 megapascals. So that's a lot of stress from a 20,000 newton meter core. 20,000 newton meter couple moment, rather. So this problem is going to be one that I want you to work on your own. It's a little bit more complicated. It looks almost the same, doesn't it? But why is it more complicated? Well, you no longer have a neutral axis that's at the geometric well, let me, re let me rephrase that. You now have to use the parallel axis theorem because we're symmetric still, but our neutral axis is here. So we'll need to find the centers to here. So I challenge you to do that one on your own. But I will give you the answer. So the answer to this sigma max tension equals 2.4 KSI and sigma max compression equals 4.8 KSI. Write that down, but scratch it out because that's the answer for the next problem. The problem, the problem, the answer for this problem is 40.2 megapascals. These are the answers for the next problem. So for this problem, this is something that often happens in class that you see that's very frustrating, but Polaris just stops working. So we will just be patient and let it restart itself as it always does. So we lost all our annotations, but we can quickly get back to where we were. I figured this would happen at least once when I'm trying to videotape it. So this is another problem that I want you to work on your own. So as I said in the previous problem mistakenly sigma max intention equals 2.4 KSI sigma max and compression is 4.8 KSI so where would tension and compression be? At the bottom, at the top, where, where would each one be? So I'll let you figure that out so draw the shear moment di diagrams for the simply supported beam this is something that you can very much expect to see on your test. So draw the shear and moment diagrams. 
So what I'll do is trust that you can solve for by and ay by summing your moments and your your forces. So by is three kilonewtons. Ay is one kilonewton. So as I asked you to do in class, I always want you to draw your free body diagram. This is one, this is three, this is two, this is four, this is two away, two away, and two away. So draw your free body diagram, then draw your shear right under it and your moment right under that. So our shear starts at one because we have a concentrated load. We're steady all the way down until we drop down four. So this brings us to negative three. Go across. And this better be a negative three here because we have to be at a negative three to go all the way up. So it is. So that's our shear diagram. Our moment diagram, we start at zero. We climb up steadily. Then we have a concentrated moment that shoots us up two. Climb up steadily. So this brought us up to two, up two more, up two more, and then all the way down. So check with yourself that the area under this portion, three times two, equals the height change from here to here, which is six. So it checks out. So here's an excellent problem that involves a chop. So I will just abbreviate this problem by giving you the answer to the chop. So you can take a chop anywhere in this, in this region. So you should find that V equals 275 minus 6.25x squared and moment equals 275x minus 2.083x cubed. Okay? And m is the integral of v. So the derivative of v, of m, is v. So we'll draw our shear and moment diagram. We, we have our distributed load here going down on our beam we have we solved this earlier I didn't show it but I'll trust that you can solve that on your own 625 here so our shear diagram we start at 275 we're parabolic down all the way to a negative 625 And you can find where this crosses the zero at 6.63 by setting your v of x equal to zero. And you get x is 6.63 feet. So our moment diagram, we're parabolic up. We hit a max, then we drop down, and then we shoot back up here. This value is a negative 308. This crosses at negative 11.5. And this top value is 1260. So I'll challenge you to figure out how we got these values from your moment equation. So the next problem is another really good one, something that you may see again. It involves how many chops on this one? You should be able to figure that out. And drawing a shearing moment diagram is no trivial pursuit. So I'll let you do that one on your own. And then we'll move on to this problem. So the only kicker in this problem is we don't have a reaction force here. Our force in the Y is zero. And our force in the X is zero. But we will have a moment. Okay, so our moment it's going to look like this. So we'll have a moment at A. And solving for that problem 
is pretty straightforward. So I'll let you do that one on your own. And we're going to wrap it up with our final problem. So we're given this image. It's a box beam. It's constructed of four pieces of wood glued together as shown. If the moment acting on the cross section is 10 kilonewton meters, determine the stresses at point A and B and show the results acting on volume elements located at these points. Okay, last problem of the evening. My coffee's getting cold, so it's almost time to go. So let's get started. So what do we want to find? We want to find stress at A, stress at B, and a sketch. So we have a box element here, a moment is being applied here, we have a point B, and we have a point A. So right away, you should look at this and say, well, B is probably going to be in tension, A is going to be in compression, and the absolute value of A should be bigger than the absolute value of B. So, solution. For point A, Y of A is what we call C. C is our perpendicular distance from the neutral axis to the farthest point on that beam, and that's 0 0.15. So, we can find our I equals 112 base times height Q minus 112 base times height Q and we get 0 0.2417 times 10 to the negative third meters to the fourth. For our stress at A we have everything we need. We have M, Y of A, and I Plugging everything in, we get 6.21 megapascals. So for point B, our YB is 0 0.125. So our sigma at B would be 5.17 megapascals. That's in tension. This one's in compression. So our volume element for A would look something like this, stress at A, and our volume element at B will look something like this, stress at B. Okay, that's it. So that's the conclusion of our bending lecture. So I hope you've enjoyed our time this evening, and because you sat through the whole lecture, and I trust that you didn't fast forward all the way to the end. Here are extra problems that you can practice um, once we pan back. They're problems 6 8, 6 22, 6 37, 6 43, 6 61, and 6 77. So we'll pan back once we're done. So thank you for your time, and enjoy your evening.